Nitty. And I'm Nishka. And we're back with another video, and this time we're going to be talking about Pushpanjali. And Pushpanjali is normally the first dance in an Arangetram, and we'll be talking specifically about the Pushpanjali to Lord Ganesha. And if you look at the picture on the right, you can see that Nithi is depicting Lord Ganesha, and I'm the mouse. So before we get started, let's do a quick recap of episode two. In episode two, we talked about the different dance forms that have originated all over India. We also talked a little bit about the story behind Lord Natraja, as well as the significance of each part of his idol. And in this video, we'll be covering when we started Parthenakyam, so we'll go in a little bit more in depth about ourselves. And then we're also going to go more in depth about specific types of Parthenakyam dances, such as mudras and hand motions and dance forms as well as the significance of Lord Ganesha and his specific dance, the Pushpanjali, and we'll also talk a little bit more about upcoming videos. So Nishka and I started learning Bharatanatyam when we were in second grade, and we were very young. And we started Bharatanatyam because both of us enjoy dancing, and you can see this in the picture in the middle. Um, fun fact, that was actually a picture of us dancing to the song, The Gummy Bear. And we performed the song in our second or our third or fourth grade um, talent show. So that was really fun. And it shows that we've started, we've always had a love for dancing. And at that age, we were, were always so energetic as well. So when we started with the Natyam, there were a lot of benefits. Firstly, as toddlers and as kids, um, we tend to have a lot of energy. So we were able to get rid of all that energy as well as going outside as well but get rid of all of that energy while going to dance class and it was a lot of fun it also kept us physically fit in all these years it gave us a community aspect as well because but most of the time when you um, learn birth and Atium, it's normally in a dance studio and in these dance studios there's um culturally similar people because birth and is a classical dance so when you're surrounded by people of your um, same culture you tend to make more connections and you feel more involved in your culture and that brings me to the um, point below that which is culture and personally for me i have always loved indian clothes indian music anything indian so joining birth and Atium, i would say plays a big part in that since I was little, and since I started wearing birth and acting costumes, I've always enjoyed dressing up, um, and especially in those costumes as well, but I enjoy dressing up in other things such as salvars, um, gagras, and stuff like that. So all this makeup, um, classical makeup, and all of these hair traditions, especially with the long braids, um, it might not seem like it's fun since it's very heavy, but as it comes to time and as you keep doing it, it's honestly one of my favorite things because you can have long hair for a moment when you're performing so just things like that starting young really gave me the benefit of being able to do all of these things and be involved in my culture also since i started young i learned a lot of different slokas and i i am i am a very nervous person so i'm not good around people i'm not good on the stage but one thing that i have gotten over since i've been since i've done birth and Atyam is I don't really have stage fear anymore. I, it used to be that I couldn't perform in front of people. I would get so nervous, but now that's gotten away just because of doing countless annual performances, um, getting countless trophies and things such as that. So let's talk a little bit about the dance forms or aspects of Bharatanatyam. It's classified into two main forms, Tandava and Lasya, which is masculine versus feminine. And Tan, tan, tandava is a more masculine form, and it's done with vigor, strength, and energy, which is often depicting more masculine roles such as Krishna or Shiva, which you can see in the Krishna Tandava and the Rudra Tandava. And these Tandavas are depicting stories, and these stories are usually told from the male point of view or are showing the male as the main character, which is why they have a more masculine form. Lasya is more feminine, and it's more of body movement with grace and beauty, which was a lot of what feminine characteristics were and then this was introduced by goddess Parvati and it strengthened Lord Shiva's Tandava and it was created in response to the male energy of cosmic dance so essentially Lasya was created in response to Tandava to balance and Lasya can directly translate to beauty happiness enchanting and grace which are feminine qualities okay so I'm going to be talking about mudras and mudras are also known as 
um, hand gestures. So these mudras depict different objects such as, for example, the Shiva Linga. We'll talk about what kind of um, mudra it is later. But mudras fall into the same category as bhavam and also thalam. And we talked about how bhavam was facial expressions and how thalam is the beat that we use for foot coordination. So mudras come in two types, a samyukta hasta and samyukta hasta. And hasta is also a word for hands. So the single um, hand gestures, some examples are pataka, virpataka, and mukula. And some examples of double-handed gestures are Anjali, Pushpaputa, and Shivalinga. And this is where Shivalinga comes into picture again. And we use this to depict any time in the song where we need to depict um, a linga, we use Shivalinga's mudra. So I'll be talking a little bit about Pushpanjali, and it's the invocatory dance, and it's usually the first dance in a lot of Arangitram's annual recitals and things like that and it's the offering of flowers to deities like Lord Natraja as well as Lord Ganesha and it's also when the dancer takes blessings from the audience as well as their gurus and orchestra and the reason why this dance is usually the first dance in a lot of recitals at, at engagements is because Lord Ganesha essentially symbolizes the removing of all obstacles so by starting with this dance, it's essentially wishing the dancer good luck and getting rid of the obstacles for this auspicious occasion. Like how Nishka said, we pray to Lord Ganesha, we start off a dance to Lord Ganesha because he gets, gets rid of all the obstacles that we might see. And similarly, a lot of people pray to Lord Ganesha in, in when they look for good news as well. So some, some of the significance of Lord Ganesha is that um, his big head talks about how all of us should think bigger and his large ears tell us we should listen more just as his um, small mouth tells us we should talk less. So just these are some of the things that Lord Ganesha um, tells us with his idol. So when we look at all of these things, it's important for us to understand that these are life lessons we should implement in our own lives. And also another thing about Lord Ganesha that is very evident is um, with the large stomach and this represents digesting both the good and the bad news. So these are some of the reasons why we pray to Lord Ganesha before any big event and especially in um, an Arangetram and in the Pushpanjali. Um, so we're going to be playing a short clipping of our um, Pushpanjali during our Arangetram, so I hope you enjoy. And if you remember, that was the picture on the very first slide. Oh. <laughs> earlier I talked about how um, starting Bertha Natum earlier also gives you um, a way to learn slokas and prayers. And that's what I'm trying to do by putting slokas into all of these videos. 
So um, the prayers to Lord Ganesha are Vakratanda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakareshu Sarvada. And this means, O Lord with a curved trunk, the large body whose aura is like a light in many suns, please make my entire work obstacle free forever, which is what Lord Ganesha was symbolizing. So let's recap. In this video, we went over what video two was about. We also talked a little bit about mudras. We showed you a short snippet of our Pushpanjali dance. We talked about what Lord Ganesha symbolizes. And then we also talked about what the Pushpanjali is. And you guys got to know us a little bit better when we talked about when we started Bharatanatyam and why we started when we did. And in the next videos, we're going to be going more in depth about mudras. And we're going to do an overview of all the mudras. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you.